Well, hey everyone, howdy again. Um, it is Tuesday, pretty late afternoon, kind of early evening. Uh, what is it, the 15th? Um, and I'm just wrapping up grading the, uh, the research scavenger challenge assignment uh, for both of my sections. And the thing that has been sort of taken me the longest with this assignment or the thing that I've been kind of zeroing in on the most is the research questions that you're asked to kind of come up with. I think it's like three or four research questions. Um, and I am finding that sort of the difference between or the distinction between those who are doing like really, really well and just getting, you know, full marks on the assignment and those who are getting, you know, a few points docked off kind of goes to that specific part of it, the research question. So I was thinking maybe I would, uh, just like I did with the, the topic uh, video, um, when I find that there's something that kind of like is a, a broad theme that's cutting across both of my sections worth addressing, because I don't get to talk to you guys much. This class is like already created by someone else and it's I don't feel like it's mine and this way I feel like I'm talking to you guys a little bit and I'm trying to do my best to keep up on emails and messages and I got lots of chattering going on with many of you which I do like it's just harder to do it this way than you know in a classroom kind of thing so um, and as you know I've been sick last week this weekend it was actually my sixth wedding anniversary so my wife and I went to Utah so I'm now finally like mostly healthy and <laughs> the anniversary is over and now I'm getting all my grading caught up. I have another class, uh, rhetorical tradition, where they have a paper and a, an exam. So I've got a lot of grading in general and I'm going to really hustle to get through it all. But anyway, I wanted to talk a little, just a little bit about these research questions. And, and the, what I actually wanted to talk about is is not so much even just the assignment, it's, but it's, it's meant to, again, kind of like extending off of the topic conversation just meant to help with the kind of thinking about the assignments in this in this class and the kind of class in general and the big themes of the class, which has to do with, you know, how it is that we as citizens of a democracy walk around and get information and process information and then how we use that information to make arguments and, and to form opinions and beliefs that guide us in our lives and become the kind of architecture of our of our existence and so it's an important class for how it is we are you know engaging with information and processing information and and then shaping our own ideas about topics and sending them out in the world so we take it pretty seriously here and this is you know an old process we can go way back to cicero and isocrates you know i teach the rhetorical tradition that's the other class i'm teaching and that's where we start we go back to the ancients and we talk about you know building arguments and some of the things to avoid and the temptations and sophistry and so on and so we're doing our best to uh think about the world that we live in and inhabit and this world of mysteries and this world of 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 conflict and controversy and struggle and strife and misery and so much that's going on and how we can watch it and process it and and work it through and then do our best to come up with good strong positions and opinions and arguments. Um, so anyway, I, I was noticing a lot of good uh, research questions, and but the, the ones that were that I'm making the most comments on, that I've, I've kind of noticed, I would say, three trends or three kind of themes in terms of the questions. So the questions that did not do so well, and again, I'm talking about this because it's not just about the wording of the questions, but it's how we're thinking about our topics and it's how we're thinking about the, the job of doing the research, right? And so I noticed these three kind of problem areas and I just figured I would talk about them and, and then sort of talk about, you know, that as a way of thinking and ways that we can uh, and, and sh strengthen and sharpen our approach here. So the first kind of major theme or issue or struggle that, that I was noticing has to do with big, vague, or broad language, right? So phrasing things in a very big, broad, kind of vague way is one way to make sure that you kind of never really land anywhere in particular. So I have been making lots of comments about, please be precise, please be detailed, please focus on 
concrete things. So instead of saying, using words like good or bad or, you know, right or wrong or whatever, you try to get more descriptive and more precise and more concrete, focus on specific things and not just kind of big sort of subjective kinds of words or hard to define kinds of words or very abstract kinds of words, right? And so... Uh, I was just thinking there was one recently on like legalizing or having marijuana lounges in Las Vegas, right? And and I'm not saying this person did good or bad questions, but just as that topic, one could sort of come up with a you know a research question that says something like, "Hey, is this a good idea to do this?" Um, or is it like, is you know, is legalizing marijuana bad? Right? Big question, right? Whereas what we want to be doing here is get as much granular information and good solid information as possible and so you want to kind of narrow that down and get more specific and concrete by thinking about specific things particular kinds of issues right so specific issues specific variables issues related to age and youth perhaps issues related to you know driving and mobility the fact that las vegas is a is a car city that i think matters right so instead of just sort of saying in a big, broad sense, is it good, is it bad, is it right, is it wrong, you got to kind of like really narrow it down on a very specific concrete thing. So you got to get your, your thinking really tight around specific issues, variables, examples, and so on, right? So vague and broad language was one kind of theme that I noticed. Um, the second theme, you, you, I might have made a comment about like, uh, try to avoid leading language or loaded kinds of questions, right? So where you might be familiar uh, with the fallacy, it's called circular reasoning or begging the question, right? Which is assuming in the way you ask the question, the very thing that's actually up for, for question, right? And so, you know, a classic example of a kind of loaded question is like, you know, a lawyer says to someone on the stand, hey, uh, how long have you been beating your wife, right? Like, if the very thing that we are trying to establish is whether this person has been <laughs> abusing their spouse, right, to say how long have you been doing is to assume the very thing that you are trying to establish that you're, that is up for question, right? And so I saw lots of Questions where you're actually asking or you're you're loading up your question with the assumption that is not necessarily proven, right? And that you you usually notice that happening when th there's like loaded words, there's slanted, biased kinds of words in there having to do with, you know, like, isn't it going to be bad if we do this, right? Like lead, lead, lead. So you want to keep your language neutral. You want to try to take away any of the like, I already know this is bad, and so I'm going to build that in there and just say, how bad is this thing? Try to get that stuff out there and just ask a very kind of clean, neutral question about what would happen or has there been any evidence of something like this somewhere else where you're just trying to like get the facts, get the facts, right? So try to avoid big, baggy, vague questions. Try to avoid loaded, leading questions that are packaging in the very thing that's not necessarily established yet. So keep in mind what you're trying to do here is is uncover for yourself and for, you know, the audience of people that you're going to be making your argument to at some point. You and keep in mind just the world of kind of citizens, the world of the community that we inhabit, right? You want to make your best argument to whoever might be encountering at some point. Um so that's the the first two is one is vague, two is loaded, and then three is something I'm calling crystal balling, which is sort of an extension of the last one. <laughs> this one's this one's always fun to, to read because it's sort of like you're you're asking. It's almost like I do this sometimes when I'm playing around with ChatGPT or AI. It's like I ask it some like really over the top kind of question that it's not necessarily equipped to answer, and it's really sort of like the very the very thing that you are doing in this assignment or in this topic for the whole semester, you're trying to kind of come up with, will something be good if we do this? Or will it be bad if we do that? You know, and so you can't really ask, like if you're putting in your, your, your term, you can't just say, you know, is something bad, right? Or is this going to be a disaster? So you can't, you know, ask the question of the, you know, solve this for me, like the crystal ball thing, right? Hey, what is the answer to this question? 
So you got to think of your job here as breaking up this topic down into manageable little chunks that you can reliably establish through good research, right? And so you come up with, you know, rates of whatever, cause and effect relations. We do this, this will happen. And we know that to be true because we've seen it in other places. So you're looking for patterns, you're looking for trends, established things, right? So, you know, what would happen if we go with marijuana lounges here in Las Vegas? I don't think we have them yet. Maybe we, maybe, maybe this is a on, uh, an up and coming thing. Well, instead of just saying like, won't this be a disaster? How would we figure that out? Well, we can maybe look at, you know, other places where they have more liberal, you know, drug laws or whatever, you know, Copenhagen or Canada, I think even. Um, what has been the, you know, what has been proven? What has been shown? Let's go with what we can establish and document and try to get as specific and concrete as possible. So, that's really it. I just noticed those three kinds of questions. A lot of them are really good. I guess the, the last one, maybe I didn't write this down, but as I'm thinking about it, there, I, I had made this comment a few times where I, it's known as um, the double-barreled proposition. I used to teach debate. And if you've done any debate, you know that you begin with a proposition or a, you know, an a, a assertion that two teams are going to either defend or argue against. And that, you know, we learned that you don't want to create a double-barreled proposition, right? Like, um, you know, legalization of marijuana lounges is bad for Las Vegas and would result in da 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 that and part where you're taking us in a whole different direction. That's this idea of a double-barreled where your, sir, your attention's kind of split in two directions. So the last thing maybe is be careful of, like, overly complicated and overly, like, uh, layered kinds of questions, right? So you always want to just be out sort of asking yourself one thing and go establish that and then go establish the next thing and then put together the portrait of your topic. And it doesn't have to be the whole thing, right? I've been pushing most of us to kind of like get narrow, get narrow, because a lot of these topics are really complicated and layered and they, they go in all kinds of different directions and they have history and context and so on and so on, right? So we want to just get manageable like what can we actually manage here so i've been making lots of comments about focus on precision focus on details focus on being concrete focus on being neutral focus on not as assuming the thing that you're that's sort of in question or that's that's up for that's up for um being established right so hopefully these things uh make a little bit more sense as i've you know made my comments and as you're going through these activities as i say the research questions and how you're wording them and how you're thinking about them to me is very important because it's really at the heart of how we're coming at each of these next assignments and and how we're thinking about them so hopefully this little discussion might help you um uh, get a better sense of where I'm coming from and how I'm reading your submissions. Uh, so I have been really enjoying interacting with a lot of you. Um, I will be in my office hours tomorrow if anyone wanted to come by and say hi. Uh, otherwise, I will continue to you know get caught up on grading and we will keep marching along. And I hope everyone's doing well out there. I think the weather's finally going to start cooling off soon. I can't wait. I'm so tired of the heat. So hope everyone is well and we'll talk to you soon. Later.